Hey, this is Dr. K from my medical school, and today we're going to talk about one of the oncology emergencies called febrile neutropenia. Febrile neutropenia is something you will commonly come across if you deal with cancer patients, and even in patients who do not have cancer, this can occur due to medications or other viral illnesses. So let's talk about what is febrile neutropenia. Well, febrile neutropenia is a common complication of chemotherapy, but like I said before, it can be due to other things as well. By definition, you'd have a temperature greater than 100.4 and a neutrophil count of less than 500 cells. We can assess the neutrophil count by calculating what's called the ANC, or absolute neutrophil count. We can do this by taking the sum of percent of neutrophils plus the percent of bands and multiplying that times the white blood cell count. Then we divide by 100. Also, if you have absolute numbers, you take your absolute neutrophils plus your absolute bands and multiply that sum by 1,000. That will give you your ANC, or absolute neutrophil count. Now with all this information, once you have defined someone as having febrile neutropenia, you need to proceed on to the management of febrile neutropenia. So how do we manage patients with febrile neutropenia? Well, like everything in medicine, it all starts off with the history and physical. Now what are you looking for in the history and physical? So first off in the history, I'm looking for things that could cause a neutropenia. Have they had chemotherapy recently? How recently have they had chemotherapy? What agents have they used? Have they started any new medications that could, could contribute to them becoming neutropenic? In addition, I want to know about sources of infection. They're having urinary symptoms, shortness of breath, um, have they had a new catheter placed recently? Have noticed any rashes or redness or changes in their skin. What I'm trying to find out is a source of infection as well, in addition to what could be causing it. You also want to assess them with a CBC, a diff, to see if they're actually neutropenic. And once you have defined them as febrile neutropenia, obtain blood cultures, a urinalysis, as well as urine culture. Again, we're assessing for the source here. Is it bacteremia? Is this a urinary tract infection? Even if they don't have symptoms, I would get these urinalysis, urine culture as well, just because the neutropenic, they may not be able to demonstrate symptoms. Sputum culture is very important, and again, assess for your lines and ports. Ports are very common in patients with chemotherapy, and lines are also very common. So and these are sources of infection that can be easily removed and uh, the infection can be treated. Now that we've talked about the workup for febrile neutropenia, let's talk about risk stratification for these patients. Consider patients in the low risk category who have no comorbidities and they have a short duration of neutropenia. Also, they'll have no liver or renal dysfunction. Now, obviously, you'll not come across these type of patients within the hospital setting. It's more of an outpatient setting. In terms of high-risk patients, they tend to have other comorbidities like other medical problems like CHF, hypertension, diabetes, so on and so forth. They also have liver or renal dysfunction, pneumonia, they may have mucositis, and also they may have progressive slash uncontrolled cancer. So all these indicate a patient who is high risk and needs to be treated differently than a patient who is in the low risk category. Now that we have risk stratified our patient, how do we treat our patients with febrile neutropenia? So there's some keys to treatment. First, make sure you're always covering pseudomonas, because that's one of the common bugs that infects patients with febrile neutropenia, and they can decline very quickly if they go untreated from a pseudomonas infection. Number two, make sure you cover gram negatives before you cover gram positives. Again, gram negatives are associated with a higher mortality morbidity than are gram positives. You can survive for a little bit with a gram positive bacteremia. So always cover your pseudomonas and always cover gram negatives and then consider covering gram positive bacteria. In addition to all these, you want to make sure that if any lines are present, that you do cover them from gram positive coverage. That's why it's good to do a good physical exam. So you know what ports they have. Do they have a central line? A pick would also be in another area where they can get infected. Or previous sites of insertion of the lines could also be sites where they could be infected. If no improvement after broad spectrum antibiotics, always consider antifungal therapy because you have to realize these patients do not have an appropriate immune system to respond to bacteria and funguses, so they may have a fungal infection. Now, how do you treat febrile neutropenia? Well, it really depends on if the patient is low risk or high risk. So low risk patients are really the minority of patients and you really won't see very commonly within the hospital. But you can treat these patients with an oral antibiotics. So you could start with ciprofloxacin which will help cover pseudomonas as well 
with that, you can use amoxicillin and clavulanate. So this combination is generally used for patients in the outpatient setting who have a low risk of prolonged febrile neutropenia. Now, how do we treat high-risk patients? Well, it really depends on what hospital you work at, but again, the same principle applies. We want to cover both gram negatives as well as pseudomonas, pseudomonas being our first choice to cover. So our initial antibiotic should really either be cefepime or piperacillin slash tazobactam. So cefepime has both gram negative and some gram positive coverage. In addition, it does cover pseudomonas. As well as piperacillin tazobactam, which is otherwise known as zosin, has both gram negative coverage and does have anti-pseudomonal activity. It also depends on kind of where you work. So some antibiotics work better for pseudomonas in different locations across the country. If the patient has a penicillin allergy, you can start with astreonam, which will have general gram negative coverage, and then provide them with vancomycin as well. This will give them a broad spectrum coverage, and you can see how they do if they improve or not. If you're not having improvement on just cefepime or zosin, consider adding vancomycin or tobramycin. So vancomycin is truly a just gram-positive antibiotic. It, it will cover all your gram-positives, especially if a patient has line infections or has mucositis. There will be other indications to do vancomycin. Tobramycin also provides pseudomonal coverage. So a lot of times we have to double cover for pseudomonas because pseudomonas has a high resistance rate. So using a cefepime with Tobra or a piperacillin tazobactam with Tobra will give you better gram negative as well as double pseudomonal coverage. Now, you do all this, the patient's still not improving, consider antifungal, so such as caspofungin would be an example. Now, if the patient has pneumonia, you may want to consider amphotericin or fluconazole. And as you work down this, you know, which make sure that the, if the patient's improving or not. And if they're not improving, keep on going down the list in terms of using antibiotics and antifungals. And again, most importantly, you really want to tailor antibiotics based on culture data. You don't want to keep them in broad spectrum for too long if they're improving. You want to tailor to what will treat their bacteria. Once the ANC improves, you can consider tailoring them off IV antibiotics to about oral antibiotics and see how they do from there. Now, reminder, in febrile neutropenia, which here just like sepsis or SIRS, it's important to give proper fluid resuscitation. So give them fluids just like you would anyone who has a bacteremia. Uh, a little something different than we, how we treat patients with sepsis is the use of nupogen or filgastrum or nulasta, peg filgastrum. These are agents that can help increase the neutrophil count so that their neutrophil count isn't depressed for so long. So this is a way we can bring them up, get their immune system, start fighting off this bacteria. Well, that was a short review of febrile neutropenia. I hope you liked this video. If you do, share this video with your friends on Facebook and Twitter. You can follow us at iMedSchool on Twitter. Subscribe to our channel and make sure to like this video if you like it. If you have any comments or suggestions for future videos, place them down below. And most importantly, listen to our podcast as well at iMedSchool on iTunes. This is Dr. K from iMedical School, and I'll see you next time.